Okay, so here is a little crude Doppler radar setup I have right here. I'm going to demonstrate how it works first and then go over the parts and schematic of it. Uh, I have two uh, microwave sources. Right here is a, a Klystron with a waveguide. And right here is a LNB taken apart so that it's a transmitter now. Both run at about 10 gigahertz. And I have a receiver right here that uh, drives a speaker and I have that feeding into an oscilloscope so we can see the output of it. So for the reflector I'm going to use this piece of copper clad board. Uh, it just uh, gives the best results. Set you guys up. Okay, so we're set up. I'm first going to demonstrate the, cli the klystron because it's a stronger signal. So what I'm doing is I just have this piece of copper clad board and I'm just moving it closer and farther away. I'm going to move you guys closer to the scope so you can see better. Okay, so that's the Klystron working. So now I'm going to switch over to this uh, LNB here. It's a little lower power, but the way it's set up, it produces like a frequency modulation in the tone, which is a little bit easier to hear from the distance. Okay, so just for the fun of it, I thought I would hook this up to the display. It's not, it's not going to be a correct PPI display, but I think what should happen is that when we move, we should get like wedges of different widths based on how fast the object is moving. So I'm going to try that and see if I can get that to work.
that's quite fun. Okay, so let's get to the circuits and see how this all is put together. Okay, so this is the schematic for the klystron. Uh, this is a reflex klystron, which it, it generates its own radio signal. And it's, it's complex in operation, but it's actually very simple to drive. All you need are two uh, power supplies, about 300 volts and then negative 300 volts. And the plus 300 volts is the actual driving potential for the tube. And then the negative 300 volts is used as a, a bias supply for, I think it's called the repeller or repulsor or something like that. It, it basically shoots electrons through a cavity and then this electrode right here reflects them back to go through the cavity again. I, I'm not quite entirely sure how it works. It's a little complicated. That's being driven with a transistor uh, with a, a gate, uh, the base drive transformer. Uh, this is done because uh, it's it's simplest for this, in this case, for the cathode to be grounded, which would mean we can't do a low side switch. We have to do a high side switch. So we have to switch the case of the mag of the klystron up to 300 volts. And in order to do that, we, we still need a connection to the emitter of the transistor to turn it on effectively. And this transformer right here isolates, the, isolates that so we can drive it. And right here is a transistor that drives the driver transformer. The scheme for generating the signal for this is kind of convoluted. It starts out with a one transistor oscillator at about one megahertz, and then that's divided down to one kilohertz. And that that is then fed into a bistable or semi-stable. I'm a little unsure what the name of this chip is, but whenever you give it a pulse, it generates a single pulse of the desired pulse length that you want. And I wanted to have a, a one microsecond wide pulse. So what I can do is I can view this signal on one channel and then the output of this on the other channel. And then I can adjust them so that they have the same width. It was just the easiest way to be able to check that I had the one, one microsecond pulse width. So that's that. So for the receiver, Right here, it consists of a LNB and then just a really high gain amplifier. I take the output of the LNB and it goes into a high frequency rectifier and just a high gain amplifier stage, which drives a class A audio amp and drives a speaker. Uh, this circuit is from a publication called the, all, uh, the Magical All Band Receiver or the Amazing All Band Receiver or something like that. It's the same circuit, but just modified to have that as the input. Okay, so I'm going to show you the insides of these and all of the different parts. Okay, so this is the inside of the receiver. Right here you can see the LNB. And right there is the detector diode. It's a UHF microwave detector diode. And right there is a high frequency transistor. It's about, I think, a 9 gigahertz transistor or something like that. I mean, all this stuff right here is just an audio amp, so not really anything interesting. On this circuit I didn't draw. It's just a circuit that when you first turn the unit on, it shorts out the signal from the LNB, because if you power it all on at once, it will oscillate. And shorting that out just makes it kind of settle down a little bit. Okay, so here's the inside of the Klystron transmitter. Right down there, sorry, shaky hands, there's the one megahertz oscillator. And right there are the dividing chips. And that chip right there is the pulse generator, the one microsecond pulse generator. Right here is the driving circuit. It's a little hard to see, but this transistor right here is a horizontal output transistor from a color television. 
and that's the driving transformer from the television. And right down there is the driver transistor. This entire circuit is copied off of the horizontal output stage of a color television. Right here is the power supply, the transformer, and right there is the klystron tube. It's hard to see, but there is a No, you can't see a damn thing. There's a screw down there that you can adjust. Man, that's so shaky. To adjust the frequency. So that's that. And right here's the waveguide. It's made out of the copper clad board. All soldered together. And it's covered in aluminum foil, so you can't see, but there's an RF gasket in there between the surface of this plate and the face of the klystron. Okay, so this is the last circuit. I didn't draw it out because it's relatively simple. It's just an LNB, which has been opened up and the circuit modified so that the local oscillator has a wire sticking out right there. And it's just powered from an 18650. And this potentiometer right here is in series with the supply and acts as a fine frequency control. And these parts right here, there's a mica cap, a little RF choke, and a decoupling capacitor. And that forms like a sort of super regenerative transmitter or something like that. I'm not quite sure how it works, but this transmitter self-quenches, so it makes that sort of beat noise in the receiver because this transmitter is actually self-modulating, it's oscillating. So that just made it so I didn't have to have like an extra transistor stage to provide the modulation is in here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for now. Uh, can't really call this a, a Doppler radar because it doesn't have a, a speed readout or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out a way to do some signal processing on this output to try to get some usable data out of it. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.